I just think right now women, especially in business, this is the year of women. I just know that. Life begins at 150 grand a year. Life gets better at 250 and life gets real good at 500. Nobody can tell me differently on it. When you start teaching something, I feel like that's when you start to master the actual art of it. You and I, when we publish a book, we can go toe to toe with any of the New York trade publishers, any of the big time authors. And we get to compete in that marketplace and then let the market decide whether our stuff is good. People forget sometimes as an entrepreneur, the whole damn point of entrepreneurship is to make money. And now here is The Win with your hostess, serial entrepreneur, marketeer, and chief sexy boss, Heather Havenwood. Are you over 45, 60? Are you relying on the traditional medical field to help you feel great and get you back to a balanced body? Good luck with that. At E2Lab.com, Dr. Don Salio got sick of people complaining about bloating, inflammation, and feeling sluggish. He has created unique, potent, and powerful non-pharmaceutical supplements to help the body rebalance, detox, and get back to being healthy. Go to E2Lab.com, getting you back to healthy and balanced. Hi, everyone. This is Heather Havenwood with The Win, um, which is a podcast. Um, it's also Facebook Live. It is a ton of stuff, and I'm going to be interviewing your one and only Wes. The sales one whisperer. and only, one and only. The one and only sales whisperer. So if you're like, who the hell is this guy? I'm going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> Wes is the sales whisperer, a ruthlessly pragmatic entrepreneur, sales trainer, copywriter, and speaker who believes marketing is just selling in print, which I completely concur. love that. He's the author of It Takes More Than a Big Smile and a Good Idea and a Twitter Account to Build a Business That Lasts. And the definite guide to Infusionsoft. You can pick his brain as long as you're providing a fine cigar and smooth scotch. You know, honestly, mine's McAllen 12. It's my favorite. That's a good one. It's a good one. It's not bad. It's not like a high, high end, but it's like, you know. It's a good one. Good one. Or by listening to the sales podcast, which I was on, he's been been doing since 2013. So welcome, Wes, to The Win and Facebook Live. Thank you. Finally, I can say I'm a winner. (laughs) I'm on the win. You're on the win because you're a winner. People like a winning team, right? People yeah. like a good winning sales team. And that's kind of the thing right, right now. We're in the wave of the, the backlash of the election. And one of the commentaries last night said on some political shows that I think people really like a winning team. I completely concur that that people like be behind the, the team that's winning. So, all right. To tell us about a little bit about what you do, people listening in, like, who the heck are you? I told you a great buy. Like, who are you? What, what are you up to? And how did you get to be a sales whisperer? Well, if you send $800 to the government and no one else has claimed the name, you can get a little trademark around your name and call yourself whatever you want. Just like Dr. Seuss, right? Dr. Seuss was not a doctor. Uh, he actually got in trouble for writing things in his school newspaper. I think it was at Columbia. And um, he had to change his name so he could continue writing. So, you know what? Call yourself whatever you want. But I was uh, literally watching The Dog Whisperer. It was September, I think it was September 1st, 2006, because uh, mm-hmm. I always see the renewal date, you know, for my URL. And I was watching The Dog Whisperer, and he said that he, what did he do? He rehabilitates the dogs and he trains the owners. Yeah, that's very true. I think it's one of the training owners. Yeah, I'm like, I do that for salespeople. Mm -hmm. I train the sales managers and rehabilitate their salespeople because I'd been in sales for nine years at that point. When I got out of the Air Force, I jumped right into sales and had very little sales training. I had very little good sales training. What I usually had was product training. You know, I worked in a a lot of technical industries, a lot of startups. And the marketing department, the operations department would usually handle the sales training. And it was more of, you know, here's a new widget. It's, you know, six inches by four inches. It weighs, you know, 6.2 ounces and it's uh, 18% lighter than last year. You know, it's like, that's product training. Why does somebody buy it? Who is interested in it? So I was always looking, searching, right? Trying to get better, paying for my own stuff. My company wouldn't do it to get better. And so I had actually, I'd found a sales trainer, kind of my mentor at the time. And I was in the process of becoming his first licensee as he was taking that uh, and expanding his own business. So I was open, right? I was receptive. I was always creative 
and it's not like I don't like marketing. I like marketing a lot. I found out being a business owner that I was actually a marketer trapped in a salesman's body, but I was, I was good at sales. And yeah. I think great marketers are at their core are great salespeople. And yeah, so that's a really great point. I want to go to that for just a second that I started out in sales myself. And then I feel like who I am as a marketer, I kind of forget that, like you just said, I'm, I was a marketer trapped into a salesperson body. But then I want to ask you that question. What's the difference between really a sales and marketing person? But the first piece is I wanted to bring up is I remember being in corporate sales and their sales training was really product training. Like here's the new widget. Yeah, we did. Uh, I was back in the day during telecommunications. So we were doing, you know, phone sales, right? This is a new Nokia. I remember those days. This is a Nokia, new, new Motorola that we were selling. And then it was like, okay, go sell it. And you're just kind of like, well, how do I present that? How do I create that? And I did a bunch of sales training too. So my question to you is, as far as marketing sales, and if you notice in that corporate world, they keep those people separate. Like you have the marketing department, for right. some reason, never talks to the sales department, which makes zero sense to me. So what is the difference between a marketer and a salesperson? Well, I think there's, there's different definitions depending on the company, right? Big companies, you're right, they are separate. Uh, but they shouldn't be. At yeah. the end of the day, they should be working together. They should be in unison. You know, I always say great marketing makes selling easy, but great selling makes great marketing possible. Yeah, that's OK. Yeah. So marketing too many people, especially small businesses, they fall into the trap of trying to do what big businesses do from a marketing and a branding standpoint. Right, but we can't afford a Goodyear blimp, okay? We can't afford the MetLife Snoopy One to fly around at a chamber of commerce function and hope people eventually remember us. So, you know, small businesses should not be branding. So in a small business, marketing and sales are kind of the same thing, right? The, but you, you have to have a conversion mentality in your marketing. So the marketing becomes very salesy, if you will, right? It's not branding and has a specific message to a specific person with a specific call to action. Yeah. So it's not just, hey, look at our new location. It's so pretty. Oh, we have a new product. Call whenever you think you're ready about it. There's got to be some type of uh, scarcity, right? Either, hey, we got Black Friday coming up, you know, Cyber yeah. Monday whatever, Veterans Day sale, 4th of July sale, the you know, sale ends on you know midnight on the 4th of July, only 10 available at this price. There's gotta be a reason for me to get off my dead butt, get off the couch, put down the remote control, drop the Cheetos, put the beer down, pull out my phone, either call or text or, or go to the website right. and opt in. So for small business, there's really not any difference between sales and marketing other than maybe the medium, right? Marketers are creating an ad, they're creating a postcard, they're yeah. maybe making a, an email campaign, whereas the salesperson, you know, is typically the one engaging, right? They're picking up the phone, they're meeting the person when they come to the office or they're going out to do the demo, but they should be on the same team delivering the same message. Uh, yes, yeah, so a couple of things. One, we realize you're very unhealthy because Cheetos and beer. We now know that about you. <laughs> that's not me. I'm that's just kidding. The person I'm marketing to. Uh, ah, oh, that's the hold person on. you're marketing to. That's true. Hold on. Let me, let me, uh, Cheetos aren't showing, are they? Okay. All right. I'm good. I'm good. Well, I do want to say this. I think it's interesting. When I was in corporate America, you talk about the sales, they're the ones meeting and build the relationships. I got in trouble for my first sales funnel. No kidding. I got in trouble for my first sales funnel. So I, I created a relationship with Lockheed Martin. So I, what I call got in, I was like the one. And it was like 6,000 people I had like privy to sell to. But I, I'm not allowed to go in, like, right? Because it's a corporate and it's also military. And I wasn't allowed to just like walk in. So I was like, how do I get to my market without getting to my market? But this is right on the verge of this is like 99, 2000. So Lockheed did have email, like, cause they were a big, big company that email and they also had fax, right? I knew that. I knew they had, they were starting to get email and everyone had a fax machine. So yeah. I said, okay, right. This is like, right. So I decided I got in trouble for this. I want you to, I got in serious trouble. Um, what I did was I created a flyer, one page flyer 
And I email it to all the people I knew in Lockheed, which was only like 15 or 20. I didn't know a lot out of 6,000 or whatever. And I basically said, here as a lot as your Lockheed Martin rep for this company, you know, here's your special offer. It can only go through me. Please share this with your coworkers. Well, I mean, it's all about the CC and big companies, right? They're just like sharing with the full departments and people are sharing upon sharing upon sharing. And I said, all you need to do is fill out the form and fax it back to me. And I would come in the morning and I would have orders. I'd have orders. I do over 130 units in a month. And back then, the average salesperson was doing 30 units. So people were like, what are you? And what, what, I, got, what I got in trouble for was that I wasn't going out there to build the relationship. It was a <laughs> funnel. They were mad that I was just sitting back and like hanging out with these big orders. And then I would go deliver. I'd drive over there with these big delivery bags. But isn't that interesting? See, I consider that sales, but they consider that that's the marketing department, right? And I got fired over it after a year. They got, I got fired over it. Why did you even tell them? Because they were trying to figure out how in the hell I went from average of 30 sales a month to 130 in like 30 days. And I'm like, well, I just have my thing going. And then I kind of explained to my manager and she fired me. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Are you a business owner that has a website but not tech savvy? Do you feel like a hostage to your web guy? The better question is, do you have a money funnel so people come to your page and give you money while you sleep? No? The go watch free video at heathermakesyoumoney.com. Imagine having a money site, not a website, for your self-published book, e-commerce products, local practitioners like chiropractors or lawyers. Get a money site, not a website. Go watch free video at heathermakesyoumoney.com. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. There's my sales funnel, my first sales funnel. <laughs> I'm sitting back, you know, like this, like, <laughs> right? I was working like 10 to 2. I go to the stack, I do it, and I, you know, they would send in their credit card information. They were sending everything in. And I'm just over there, just ching, 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 you know, back in the day. That was my first sales funnel. <laughs> was that even a funnel? It is a sales funnel. It was kind of email blasting and then allowing them to share. And then they faxed <laughs> it into me. That's who awesome. Needs click, who needs lead pages when you have a fax machine? I mean, yeah, really. That's, that's the secret weapon now. We're bringing back is, faxes. Right? Okay, so this world of marketing and sales, I feel like it's the same, but some people uncollapse it. Or they say, well, that's the market department. I'm not a salesperson. I mean, if you have someone coming to you and going, hey, we need help with our sales, do you say, well, no, you really need help in marketing? No, I mean, I, I'll work with them on both, but I don't yeah. let them, I don't let the patient diagnose the sickness to me, okay? <laughs> and then That's obviously, too, it depends on the size of the company. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do just sales training for some big companies. And so if that's what they want, okay, and I like them and I think I can help them, I'll go do that. Yeah. Uh, and then, because most companies are terrible at sales. So, hey, if I can help move the needle, train the salespeople, fine. Now, in reality, once I'm in, yeah, usually, really all the time, there's a, a breakdown between the marketing and the sales. But on a smaller company, you know, I'll ask them, you know, why do you think you have a problem with sales? How long has this been an issue? Who else is concerned about this? What is the impact? if you don't make a change, right? How long has this been an issue? And, and I make them put a dollar value on mm -hmm. what they think that impact is. Because until they put a dollar value on it, they can't make an informed decision, okay? If if they go, yeah, it's probably costing us like $500 a month. Well, yeah. okay, great. You know, then my training, you have a negative ROI. You know, but if they say, yeah, you know, we're, we're a $2 million company and, and we've been seeing this the kind of decline and turnover in staff and you know missed opportunities and we're slow getting back to people like what's your average sale right you know average sale is you know twenty five hundred dollars you know we had we got five sales people you know they're supposed to be doing you know three to four sales in a week but they're doing one or two so I'm like how much is that costing you right and when and when they can say ten grand a week you know fifty grand a month or twenty grand a month right then if I have a $5,000 solution or a $5,000 per month for six months 
uh, and I can make a $20,000 a month pain go away forever, yeah. then they can justify that expense, right? That investment in me. So when they ask, you know, and that and that's true in any situation, we as salespeople, you know, we call them bluebirds, right? When an order just falls in your lap. Well, there's a difference between an order falling in your lap and a request for a quote. Right. Salespeople get fired up. Oh, they just like Lockheed Martin, just call me. They want me to quote on 150 units. You know, woo, boss, I need a discount on this because it's it's Lockheed Martin and it's a lot. You know, I normally do 30. They want 100. Yeah. This is five times my quota. So everybody's running around. But when they're calling for a quote, somebody has already put in their head what they think they need. And so in reality, they're probably just price shopping or they're trying to get that second and third quote just to fill the boxes so they can order from somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And so when they when they call and say, thank you very much. Thanks for placing your trust in us. Thank you for the opportunity. You know, not to look a gift horse in the mouth, but this is kind of a big order, kind of out of the blue. You know, may I ask what's what's driving this? Mm. Okay. Because too often we just start running around and and we're just at their whim, right? It's like, hey, I, I want that order for sure, but I'm not a servant boy, right? I'm not a quote monkey. Right. So that's what happens with the salespeople. They become, uh, they feel like servants a little bit sometimes. They're like, well, I want to build the relationships, but they can become like these administrative servants. I know yeah. I did many times in the sales organization. So you got to ask, you got to uncover like what's going on. What's really and happening? Because a lot of times they are, they're using you just to get a quote. You know, I do it now and I did it when I was in corporate America. I would refuse to quote somebody if they wouldn't give me the answers. Whoa, that was ballsy. Like, dude, I'm not going to answer you until you tell me why. <laughs> well, well, think about it. They're like, well, you know, hey, look, we're just kind of under the under the gun right now. And, you know, we, we need you to quote these 150 units and, you know, we're running this proposal, you know, by tomorrow, you know, and it's like, I understand. Yeah. But it sounds like you don't trust me because you're not willing to answer some questions. So if you're not willing, if you don't trust me just to answer some questions for a quote, how would you ever spend money with me? Right, right. So, oh, that's so true. God, that's so right? true. Right. So it's like, you know, I don't mean to be rude, but I can give you a recommendation to some other companies that'll that'll just quote over the phone. But, you know, if you just need a vendor just to give you three prices, you know, I'll give you a list price if that'll help you. Uh, right. But, you know, if you're really looking for a solution, I got to ask you some questions. I need some answers so I can really help. So how do you move something like, like that along? And, and, you know, and most of my listeners on the win are really about entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship and, and how do they pick up the phone and start dialing or how do they do cold calls or, you know, they're not usually getting a phone call for it. We're going to give you 150 units. It's like, how do they get to a point where they're picking up the phone and doing cold calls? I mean, I have a lot of coaches, authors and speakers and people like that who want to do speaking gigs. And there, there's this kind of mindset of a fear to do cold calling. Did you ever, I mean, your licensing of sales, the sales whisperer, did you, do you teach that? Do you teach a cold calling or like a reaching out outbound? Sure. And there's all kind of programs out there that says cold calling is dead. And those are people that just want to sell programs uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about their, their so-called marketing programs. But in reality, in B2B, picking up the phone still works. And in reality as well, the true cold call is dead, right? But that's like picking up the white pages and you sell insurance or vacuums or carpet cleaning and you just call. Right. Okay? I mean, give me a break. There's tools out there now in, in 30 seconds, I can find out where you went to college, where you went to high school, what charities you support, what your birthday is, how long you've been on the job. So it's not really a true cold call. Right, right. Okay. Like, oh, your birthday's today. I'm calling to have birthday, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And so you create a targeted list and you can call somebody and say, ideally, you get a referral. Let's say you don't okay. even have a referral, though. Let's say you you got to have a reason to call, obviously. What's that uh, reason to call other than just I want to sell them something? What's that reason to call? Well, so let's say you have speakers. Somebody wants to be a speaker and they're calling associations. Okay. Uh, and ideally, if you're just starting out, there's there's dozens and thousands of associations. You have national chapters, you have state chapters, you have regional right. chapters, you have yeah. local city chapters. Okay, and if you're if you're brand new, you may have to call these associations and go speak for free. Okay, so and 
So in reality, now the people running these events, what you have to offer them is peace of mind because every month they're looking for somebody to speak. I just spoke on Tuesday to a local charity. I'm speaking yeah. three times this week at my church. And guess what? They called me last week. Can you can you speak? I'm like, yeah, when? Uh, next week. Okay, when? Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You didn't have any, a week before, you know, you know. So, so these people running events, putting on things, they're anxious for a speaker. And then you call. You're like heaven. You're like this little angel. <laughs> hey, hey, Heather, this is Wes. Now, I have a couple of different variations, right? Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Have you ever wanted to stop swapping your time for money? Ever wanted to leverage your expertise by selling your knowledge to hundreds of people? I call that smart. And now you can easily and effortlessly, without a web guy, create memberships, online courses, coaching programs. Go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash think ific. Start making money off what you know today. Go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash thinkific. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Talk us through some templates so we can actually understand and then someone can take a, do a takeaway. So the actual cold call, like in corporate America, trying to make a deal, and it still works to this day. It's just, hey, Heather, this is Wes. My name probably doesn't ring a bell. May I take 30 seconds of your time, tell you why I'm calling, and then you decide if we ever talk again. That's a great line. I love that. It's honest. Yeah. It's a total truth. And I've had very few people slam the phone down my face from that. Now, a lot of people may say, you know, now's not a good time. Great. As soon as we hang up, because they're all multitasking, right? I got Facebook dinging. I got somebody messaging me right now on Twitter. I got I got a text message coming in. I got my other computer. They will not remember that you called 30 seconds later. Yes, yeah, right. So what do you do? How do you get them like to that point where you're like, I'm scheduling the call with you? Well, well, no. So so I'm just saying, so that's the worst case. So worst case is they slam the phone in your face or they say, hey, I can't talk right now. They won't remember. Call them in two days, three days, one week. They won't remember you call. Those that are willing to talk, you got to have a pitch. You got to have your opening line. You got to have your hook. You got to get them engaged. Now, the other side, let's say they're calling associations. Hey, Heather, this is Wes Schaefer. Are you still the chapter 121 of the Rotary, you know, or the National Association of Realtors? Are you still the Murrieta uh, member coordinator, speaker trainer, whatever person? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, I am. What do you look for in speakers? Because, you know, I, I've got a long background in real estate and working with mortgage brokers, lenders, uh, adjusters. I know you have a, a monthly meeting. What do you look for in that person? Because, you know, I'm, I'm calling to see if what I offer might be a fit. You're, you're kind of pulling, right, instead of pushing. So instead of saying, I'm the best ever, you suck if you don't bring me in. You're a total idiot if you don't. You, your association's going Linda, down. Right, exactly. You know? So a little more laid back. And, you know, and that is your job, right? And, that, and, yeah. and usually that's like a, a volunteer role, right? You're, you're already a realtor, and maybe this is something you do as a, as a side thing to help. So you're kind of busy. Is a good idea, though? If they're a speaker to say, I'm going to go out there and start speaking for free. I mean, that, is that really, does that work anymore? Is that really a good? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially okay. at the local level especially if you're new. The yeah. worst thing for you to do as an, as an aspiring speaker is to get on too big of a stage too early. Oh my gosh, I've had that before. I've seen speakers do that before where they're just not ready. They're like, well, I've spoken before. And I'm like, great, have you spoken in front of 200 people or 100 people? They kill the room. They call it killing the room. Yeah. And killing the room is really about, they don't, what I call, pull the room towards them and people get distracted, they walk out, they start to remember that thing they forgot, they gotta have that phone call, and then they walk out the room, they're gone. They don't get the attention. But when you kill the room, you kill the energy. When you kill the energy, all the money goes, what we call, off the table. So that's what you don't want. So I like the fact that you're like, if you wanna be a speaker, go out to the local level and be in front of two people, five people, 10 people, 20 people, and learn how to pull the room and not kill it off, but I like to bring the room up. And I, these are terminologies we used to use. 
Yeah, I mean, you have to. It's the only way you're going to learn. Think about anything you've ever done. First, learning to throw a baseball was you and your dad, you know, until you got better. Then you got on a team, right? Then you got played at PE, and then you played on a rec league, and and then you got bigger and better. Start small, okay? Prove to yourself that you're good and get video testimonials. I've got on my website, thesaleswhisper.com slash fans, dozens and dozens of video testimonials, and I get them when I speak. I get them during my talk. I have one in there, you'll see. I'm in the session holding this lady's hand and she's giving me a video testimonial. You can't make that stuff up. Okay, I'm so gonna be taking that because I don't have one of those. So it's gonna be yourwebsite.com forward slash fans. Yes, I'm taking it. Look at you, you're like, no, I'm totally taking no, it. No, by all means, take it. I'm saying, oh my gosh, you don't have one? I yeah. know, I don't. So right now, if you're watching on Facebook or listening on the wind, you create me a video. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I would love for you to do that. You can hashtag that at H Havenwood. But I don't have that. You know, I do have, though, on LinkedIn, a ton of recommendations, a ton, ton, ton of recommendations. And the cool thing about the the LinkedIn recommendations is that I can't put them on there. Like, it has to come from right. that person. And then they have to, it's like a double accept, right? You're like, they recommended you. And then you accept it. So it's a double accept. And that's why I did that. And so that then I can take it and place it on a website. And what Ryan Dice said, all these people, because I can say, see, they it's verified. It's like a verification process. But now I should stick the, uh, you know, stick this in front of their face and go, give me a testimonial now. You know? like, well, actually, you don't stick it right in front of their face. What do you do? Oh, tell us. Let's say I, I just gave a talk and you come up and say, Wes, that was fantastic. That was, I love the the sales agenda, how you have that specific script for locking down the appointment with decision makers. I would I'd just thank you so much. So I'm like, Heather, I appreciate you saying that. Would it be okay if I pulled out my little handy dandy iPhone here and captured that on video that would really help me pay it forward? Ooh, that is good. It would really help me pay it forward. You guys write that down. That was awesome. This will let me pay it forward. Oh my gosh. 95 out of 100, they'll do it right there on the spot. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. now here's the kicker though. A couple of things. Number one, so like right now you'd be looking at me. Okay. So I'm like, look at me and I hold the camera over here mm. to the side. Okay. So you're, you're looking at me, not at the camera. Okay. And then I want you to start with my name. Okay. Kind of like the verification. People don't trust anybody anymore. They'll think that you, you stole the testimonial from somebody else. So if you look at all my, all my videos, yeah. they all say my name and 95% again, open with my name later on they may say hey thanks a lot you know wes this was great but my name is in there but usually it's wes man it was so good hearing your talk today i really love the sales agenda so they're giving me something specific so yeah. i'm holding over here but i'm also holding their hand Ooh, why why do you okay there's some psychology here this is kind of men, cool why, why men, is that and, men and women men and women why why do you do that it's that physical connection it's a bond and you know what it calms them down 50 50 people have a death grip on my hand so as they're as they're talking i can kind of give them a little nudge a little reinforcement like it's all right keep going this is good but i'm telling you that physical connection yeah uh, there's nothing like it it just you know you'll see on tv in the news you know people are just so dry and matter of fact yeah i was just i was driving and and i just heard a bang and i didn't know what it was and so it's kind of entertaining or whatever but you're wanting that emotion Mm -hmm. right like oh my gosh heather Thank you so much. This will change my life, right? That's what you want coming out. Because, you know, like if, if we were in person, right, if we saw each other, even if it's a stranger, what's the first thing that you do? You know, you shake hands. You, shake you hands, touch, hug right? them, say hello, right? Look at them in the eye. Yeah, and if you know each other, I mean, you give each other a hug. I mean, it's that, it's that physical touch. And so it just, it, it makes it personal. And I'm telling you, it works. But what do you say to them, like, Okay, go ahead. I'm going to say it again. We're recording. Go ahead and say, your, say my name. Say Heather is amazing. <laughs> so what do you, how do you coach them on what to say? In your talk, you should be pre-framing this as well. Okay, so you're kind of warming them up. You could just mention it here and there. But even if you don't, if you gave a decent talk, people are going to come up and thank you. So let them kind of practice that one time. Let them get it out. Yeah. And then say, you know what? I so appreciate that, Heather and have your phone ready, have it on camera, have it on video, 
so I'm ready to go. So, you know, Heather, would you mind, would it be okay if I, if I pulled out my phone and got that on video and you know what, if, if you don't like it, I'll delete it. But having that uh, on video will really help me get the word out. It'll really help me pay it forward so I can serve more people. You say, you know what, you may be nervous here. Let me hold your hand. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but give me your hand. And then you got to practice, right? Because you're going to have to kind of look over here, hit start, make sure that you're on them. Yeah. You know okay. what? Even, even that, that kind of bouncing around with the camera, as that's moving around, when people see the live video, it, it makes it, it just seem even more real because it's not yeah. just zoomed in, perfect lighting, hair's blowing, you know? <laughs> so, so I let them go. And you know what? And I'll correct people. Uh, I had a friend of mine a couple of months ago. I, I was uh, I spoke at her event. I was like, "Hey, can I get a testimony?" She said, "Yeah, sure." So we go outside, and so I let let her go. She says, "Wes was so great," and she's looking at the camera. I'm like, "Okay, I love that. Can you look at me now? And don't look at the camera. Look at me." And I said, "And start with my name, you know." But just it's just you and me talking. So again, she started. She goes, "Yeah, Wes was so great," and I, I like, "Nope." Now this is a friend, so I was able to I, was, I could be a little more curt, <laughs> right? I was like, just said, just talk to me. And, and I have the raw video and I show people in my training. She's like, I thought you wanted a real testimonial. <laughs> I'm like, this is a real testimony. This is a real testimony. I'd rather do, you know, Wes, I really appreciate everything you did tonight and, and really shared tonight. I really appreciate that versus Wes was amazing. Right. I, this is a conversation. And so then I'm like, I said, give me your hand. She's like, I have to hold your hand. I'm like, that's just so awkward. I'm like, whatever, give me your hand. And so you see the before yeah. and then the correction. Mm -hmm. And then I hold her hand. She looks at me in the eye, like a 40, 45 second, flawless, beautiful testimonial. Bam! Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Our whole world revolves around our smartphones now. You know they say we look at our phones on an average of 150 times a day or more. Look, if you're a small business and want to grow, you need to reach people where they're looking the most, their smartphones. So text the word START to 72000 now to learn more from our friends at Mobit or go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash Mobit. Again, text the word START to 72000 now. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. I'm always one of those people when they say in the seminars, hey, let's have some people in the back of the room do a, a testimonial. I'm always the first one up. There's a couple of reasons. One is so that I can train myself to share in a testimonial way because they don't want them long. They want them like 40 seconds, five, 50 yeah. seconds, maybe a minute. And then the other way is that it's actually free promotion. Sure. It's total free promotion. I, I was at, at the Altitude event back in like 2007 with Evan Pagan. They put me on stage a ton, 10 times asking questions on stage. I get people to this day like, hey, I saw you on those <laughs> things. That was really cool. You asked a great question. Or I'm actually on um, TNC's Traffic and Conversions. I'm a testimonial for them. I have been forever, like years. A ton of people. Alex Mendozian, I'm a testimonial for him on to Tell Us More Secrets for years. So it's just like, why not? You know, put yourself out there. Absolutely. But also when when you give testimonials, you're more likely to ask for them. Uh, See, and I didn't think about that. Of course. You, I didn't think about that. You're so well, smart because you're the yeah, sales worker. You just you bust the phone out and and you know what? If it takes five minutes to get a good clean 30 seconds, that's fine. You know, do you edit, and, edit it a lot or you just put it up raw? Do you just put it up raw? No, no. I, well, I'll edit some if they kind of ramble. I prefer it raw, unedited. Yeah. So, so you kind of ramble, right? Say so you give me two minutes. I'm like, that was, I'm not, so the phone's still going. Heather, that was fantastic. So let me see if I'm hearing mm. what you felt. What you were saying was you were kind of adrift. You didn't really have any structure to your selling, but now you feel like you have structure. You have a process yeah. that's going to make you more efficient on the phone. It'll make you more of a professional salesperson. Is that, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that what you, what you felt? Yes. Okay. Is it okay? Can you just tighten that up? Say, you know, Wes, thank you for the structure, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Go. And the phone's still going, I, you know, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes. Okay. And most people aren't willing to do this. And so that's yeah. why I don't have good testimonials. I can tell you I'm the mm -hmm. best sales trainer in the entire universe. 
You may believe me, you probably won't. But if I have 10 and 15 and 20 and 30 people, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, male, female, he can't fake all of those. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Those can't be all actors. I mean, he didn't right. pay all those people. You're like, okay, brother, cousin, mom, sister. Okay, you don't have that many family. <laughs> you know? So you got to get that many, and that's how you get them. And I like the fact that you're actually thinking about the diversity, and I mean that in the most honest way, because when I was in the speaking industry, in the seminar industry, sometimes the testimonials were like all white men, nothing personal, just like, you know, all white men. I'm like, guys, your market. Yeah. Not just that. You know what I mean? Like, come on. The other thing I want to say to this is I think a lot of times the testimonials people try to get are what I call a celebrity, mini celebrity. In our world, it's like you know, top speakers and top people. So they're kind of mini celebrity. I'm against that philosophy. Now I'm all for like celebrity endorsements, but I would rather see 40 videos of people I don't even know. I don't know them from Adam. They're just they're just students, they're raw students of that than I would, you know, Ryan Dice says, this is amazing. Or, you know, so-and-so Mike Dillard says, this is amazing, whatever. And Dave Ramsey says he's amazing. Cause where I go in my head with that one, is a big name like that. I'm like, either they're dear friends or he paid for that. I have big testimonials from big people that are friends. Right. Yeah. But they, they, like when I wrote my second book, I mean, a couple of them were like, just put down whatever. I love you. <laughs> So, I mean, I literally had to write a one or two or three sentence testimony. I sent it to them. I'm like, yeah, that's great. So you're right. I mean, <laughs> I would I did rather ask permission. They did, they did okay it, but it wasn't the heartfelt flowing right. testimonial from them. Right. You know, right. I got the user name. It gives me some credibility, but you're right. You know, I've got one from a talk I gave a couple months ago in, uh, in Scottsdale, just last month. Uh, that lady's 81 years old. I actually just turned 81 last week on my mother-in-law's birthday. Oh. She's like, on November 11th, I'll be 81. Oh, my God. You know, and I was just, you know, so moved by your talk. And so, I mean, you can't fake that. No. You know? And, um, and I'd I rather know, see that versus, you know, Brian Tracy. Or, yeah. You know, or I'm just speaking out loud. Tony Robbins, I love those guys. And them saying, hey, I endorse Wes or I endorse his product is one thing. Because we all know that, yes, they love you, but they probably didn't go through the course. They didn't probably right. have that pain like a student did, where they spent the $3,000 to work with you, actually had a true pain that you actually overcame. Right. And I think that that says a lot more about a testimonial. I um, mean, I hopefully Don's listening to my fiance because he does this amazing job of helping people, helping women lose 30 pounds in 30 days in his metabolic program at Skinny Beam. He's been doing it for a year and a half now. He's got about 50, 60 clients. It's a high level, right? So 50, 60 high level clients. And every day he gets a new client. I'm like, great. Where was those before and afters? You know what I mean? Where it's that a lead so client. Tell me how much weight you'd like to lose or what's your focus or what is it going to be like for you to lose 30 pounds in 30 days? And it's going to be like, oh, amazing. And then you do it again. Okay, it's been 30 days. How many did you lose? I only lost 18, 19, maybe 20, but I feel amazing. I, I feel better. I had this energy. Oh my God, say that again. You know, Dr. Don, you're amazing. I don't have, as a marketing person, as a marketing for his company, I don't have anything. I have nothing. So when we're out there marketing, I'm like, yeah, people lose 30 pounds in 30 days, which is true. I'm you like, need before and afters. Right. I'm like, I need before and afters. I need testimonials. I need, give me some video people. So, you know, hopefully he's listening. He's going to be like, oh my God, you know, okay, enough already. But it's so true. It is so true. People want to hear from other people. And I'm so glad you went down this road today. I had no idea we're going to go down this way, this sales whisperer. But it's really an accurate piece of really solid information. And I don't even have it. I don't even have it. I'm totally taking this on. And you know what? I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you for a testimonial. <laughs> uh -huh. You have to fly out here, see me, bring your iPhone. You can't do it through the video. Like, no. <laughs> I guess we could. It's the first time for everything. Like, can you look? Don't look at the camera. Look at that camera. Don't look at that camera. Look at this camera. Look, like, at, don't look at you on the screen. I got to get up here on this camera and look, look right, right at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much for this. But what do you focus on right now? And what's your main thing right now that you're focused on that people can say, hey, I want to work with you? Or you know, what kind of client do you work with? 
two types of clients. You know, my business has really evolved in the last decade, and I work a lot with small business owners, helping them automate their sales and marketing, like picking the right tool. I have a little simple free quiz that'll help you figure out. It's called Best CRM for Me. So bestcrmforme.com. It asks like 12 questions, multiple choice, and it helps you rank order some of the best tools out there that I work with. So that's become a big part of my business, but I'm kind of getting back to my roots with sales training and I'm launching the, the Make Every Sale program. So makeeverysale.com. Uh, it's a lifetime access, dozens of videos, templates like we just talked about. So I've got templates for your outbound calling, for setting sales agendas. Uh, locking people down to firm appointments, uh, overcoming objections, greeting receptionists, navigating the tough waters of that executive assistant. Uh, is she expecting your call right now? Things like that, right? Private Facebook group, like I said, lifetime access. So that's really my focus because I think people have lost kind of the art of selling. I think with, with yeah. the advent of social media and, and we're just pummeled with all these tools and this noise out there. And while it certainly does work at its core, right? To write a good ad, to have a good funnel, those people are good salespeople. They understand conversions. And unless you sell 100% online, as in you never meet, speak, or interact with prospects and clients at all, mm -hmm. then you need to understand how to make every sale. Yeah, uh, And it's just become a lost, it's become a lost art. But those that, that know it, they're the ones making all the money. So and that's probably something they're not sharing with you. They're talking about pixeling and retargeting and blah, blah, blah. But at their core, they're great salespeople. They are. They are great salespeople. That's very true. That's actually very accurate. And I know that for a fact because I just had a conversation with that, that earlier today. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you for listening and watching on Facebook Live as well as listening on iTunes. I'm going to shout out to our two sponsors which is Thinkific. Uh, you can check them out on how to basically build an online business, heatherhavenwood.com forward slash Thinkific. Very special program there. You opt in, you get it for free, especially for link for just for Heather's listeners, as well as Mobit, heatherhavenwood.com forward slash Mobit. So Wes, thank you so much. Where they can find you, the saleswhisperer.com, as well as at Twitter, Sales Whisperer, Facebook, The Sales Whisperer, and LinkedIn, The Sales Whisperer. I mean, you're like The Sales Whisperer. Hello. Any word, last words? Always have a call to action or no action will be taken. Go to makeeverysale.com, would you? Just, just do it. Just do it. Just, just do it. <laughs> just do it. All right, Wes, thank you so much. And this is Heather Havenwood. Check us out at heatherhavenwood.com. Thank you for listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Interested in coaching with Heather? Go to heatherhavenwood.com and sign up for a business discovery consultation. Here is your free gift for listening. Get three audio chapters of Heather's book, Sexy Boss, how Women Empowerment is Changing the Rulebook when you text the word SEXY to 7200. Again, text the word SEXY, that is S-E-X-Y, to 7200 and receive your three audiobook chapters. Number is good only in North America. This is a sexy boss rap. This podcast is a copyright of Havenwood Worldwide, LLC.